Hey guys, it's Eric with the Mill Park Man, where we're throwing strikes and getting likes, hitting dingers and getting listeners. Back again with another episode. Uh, this is a daily Brewers podcast. We upload every day at 5.30 a.m. so you can get your Brewers Miller Park Minute fix bright and early. Um, we're on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon, CastBox, iHeart, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, you name it, we're there. Uh, we even got some videos up on Twitch now. Uh, we're trying that out. I don't know how long that'll last, but we're, we're doing some stuff on Twitch. Uh, that being said, we're, we're going to get right into today's episode. It's Friday night. Normally, I like to go live, uh, but we decided not to do a live tonight. Just want to get a quick video out. want to chat at you real quick uh, so you can listen to something on your Saturday. If you do listen on Saturdays, thank you. It's not a work day, so I listen to most podcasts on work days, so I get if you don't listen on the weekend, that's that's awesome. But if you're here and you're hearing this, great. Thank you. Uh, remember to rate and review on your favorite podcast platform. If you haven't already yet, guys, we got a few uh, a few people enjoying the show or watching the show that aren't subscribed. Please subscribe. Uh, that really helps us know that you like the channel and you like what we're doing here and you like this daily podcast. Uh, we definitely want any feedback you do have to offer. So uh, please leave that in the comments below. Uh, you do have an opportunity to support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Miller Park Minute. Head on over there if you want to go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to we're gonna talk today. So this week we've had uh, quite a bit of conversation with some podcasters. Uh, so another solo episode for me. Uh, you know, Butcher gets his solo blocks and I, I bring on everybody. So uh, but we're going to start working the Butcher into uh, some of the interviews he's going to try and uh, jump on. We're going to try and schedule some things. It's just hard when you've got three people for a schedule. So that being said, the first topic and what I want to talk about today is the unsung, unsung hero of the Milwaukee Brewers, Brody Tillas. Brody, Brody. Uh, so we are coming in talking about Brody Tillas. Why are we talking about Brody Tillas today? Well, today Adam McKelvey posted an article about um, Brody Tillas's um declaration on why he's playing for Mexico. And I thought it was a really good story and I thought it was worth sharing. Uh so Roddy Telez um is from Cal born in California. His mother is Jewish uh from Israel and his father is Mexican uh and he was born and raised in Mexico. Uh they both um unfortunately passed before they saw him get any success uh so when rowdy rowdy had an opportunity to play for mexico um in the first uh like when he was in the minors and he was told that he was going to be coming up to the big leagues now his mom had already passed with cancer she fought cancer twice uh and finally succumbed to it uh then in the year Two weeks before he was called up to the big leagues, his father passed away. So, kind of heartbreaking in a way. It kind of went, it hit me in the feels, and this is why I wanted to talk about this. Um, Roddy came to the big leagues, obviously saw his his success, and unfortunately his, his parents and his father, who was very important to him and um, where his Mexican heritage came from, um, did not get to see him play on the biggest stage. And that's very unfortunate. So this is almost an homage or homage or however you say that to his father that he's playing for Mexico because that's his heritage and his upbringing. Um, so Rowdy chose that he wanted to play for Mexico this year. Um, he actually could have done Israel as well um, with his heritage there. He also could have done the United States. Rowdy picked Mexico because tribute to his father who passed and who, who was played baseball in Mexico. Um, and the really cool part is the reason he kind of went with Mexico is he, he, um, it was very convenient. So Mexico is actually, uh, they're, they're going to be playing at Chase Field. Their, their pool is going to be at Chase Field, which is obviously right near the Brewers spring training. 
And uh, one of the things he said in this article, and one of the quotes from him was, well, the Brewers are still a priority. We, we were left with a bad taste in our mouth. Um, you know, I'm very, we're very upset. He's very upset that the Brewers didn't make it. And he said that hurts and that stings and that they want to get back. And that's the first time that struck me, but most of the Brewers have made those similar comments. I think that goes without saying that's kind of par for the course when you're a, a professional athlete. If you, you know, miss it, you want, always want to get back, even if it's a, a game or you get in and you, you always want to get back and you always want to play. And, and that's really awesome. I think a lot of these guys have that drive and have that desire. That furthers my thought process of why I say this window isn't closed. We've got a lot of young, hungry guys, um, unextended hungry guys, but they're they're young and hungry. We don't need to trade them for prospects. This is not a rebuild. Uh, and that, that right there says it. These guys are all about playing the game of baseball. They want to play extra baseball. I mean, Freddie and I don't, I thought I saw something that Freddie isn't going to end up playing, but I can't confirm that because there was no actual news on that. That um, basically what the, what the story or what I, what I read in a handful of tweets was he wasn't going to play uh, due to the fact that he didn't have a healthy season last year. Um, And I don't have a confirmed source on that, so I can't say that that's a legit, but that sounds pretty legit. So, that being said, I mean, he didn't didn't play the full season last year, so we do want him healthy for this year and don't want him I can see that. That makes sense to me. I'm not. I'm not angry about that. Um, today, I got some response. I, I was responding to some people in the comments, uh, and I always like to talk about this once in a while in the Facebook world. Of, and I, I challenged this guy. I actually said, "Come on, my podcast. Let's discuss this." Uh, he said, "We bleeded money for the last three seasons," and I don't know what his definition of bleeded money is. But I don't think there's any point when you you were in a period where you bought a team for two hundred million dollars and you make them a billion dollar team that you're bleeding money. You are you are doing something very productive, and you're making money. They're they're telling us they're not making money. That's the story. That's what they're trying to stick us with. So when they don't sign a big name free agent, when they don't extend Corbin Burns when they don't extend Brandon Woodruff and Willie Adamas, that's why we, oh, they're, they're losing money. We can't. I'm not sympathizing with any professional sports empire, franchise, whatever you want to call it. I'm not sympathizing with them. So I just don't feel bad for them. I don't feel sorry. Um, I did post a new video to brewerfanatic.com. So if you want to go over there, take a look at that one. Um, should be up on and you can find me i actually have a profile over there uh so if you want to go uh follow my profile i'm at i, I don't know if this is if you have like levels i'm at prep ball i guess yeah i don't know what that means but yeah they have all kinds of different stuff over there so go check that out um i i Right now, I'm trying to determine kind of where, where the most active spots, where everybody's chatting. Um, I've seen a little bit of conversation in the um, diehards lately and, and some of these other brewers groups, and I'm enjoying talking to people. Um, no. So, yeah, that's, that's big, but I, I just... I, the more conversations I have with you people, and I, I mean that in the best of lights, but the more conversations I have, the more people seem to just not realize the end game and the end goal. The end goal of this is to put the World Series trophy in Milwaukee, to bring the first, the very first World Series trophy to Milwaukee. And everybody talks about prospects and who's spending the most money and all that. At the end of the day, what we want is that World Series trophy. We want to see a win. We want to see a world championship, MLB championship, World Series in Milwaukee. 
And the only way to do that is to use the best players available. And the best players available are the guys that we currently have on our roster. So I just, it, it floors me when I get into these conversations with people that, that think that if we don't trade a Corbin Burns, trade a Josh Hader, that we don't have players for the future. That's not how the system works. This is not how the system works at all. If we have to have a couple of bad years and get some some top top level picks, great. But we're still here. We're still fighting. These guys are still hungry for it. I just I I can't see it. I can't see it. I can't make sense of it. Um, and I've actually seen it now um, that that people are just straight out like. Maybe it's just anger. I don't know. Is it is it anger, guys? I don't I don't know what to say about it because it's just really, really kind of frustrating and confusing that everyone's so ticked off about everything. You tell me. You tell me. Answer that question. I don't know. Not there's not really any news in the world of major league baseball. I mean I can Track trade rumors. We talked about Williams yesterday. We spent some good time on Williams. I'm really excited for Rowdy Tellez. Rowdy Tellez had a great season with us last year. Um, and I think it's only going to get better from here. I think the best has yet to come, they say. Um, I think this this weekend, maybe, I'm going to pop out the, the video talking about how to watch the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, with everything going on with Valley, I think there's a lot of confusion of what's going to actually transpire and if we're going to lose baseball. So I want to cover that with you guys. We aren't losing Brewers baseball in Valley Sports Wisconsin. I think they are going to have to re-rack where, how they distribute their model, renegotiate their deal with cable providers, whatever it may be. But we are not going to be losing any Brewers baseball on Valley Sports Wisconsin uh, this season. Unless it absolutely collapses. But everything I've seen, everything I've read, um, we are not losing baseball on Valley Sports Wisconsin, which is good to know. Now, it may change as of next year, but I, I, I don't think I really approach that. And I will approach that more as the as we more know more information. At this juncture, there's really nothing to talk about. It's just, quite frankly, the they're going to be looking to restructure and they might have to go into bankruptcy to figure out how to restructure that kind of thing. Um, which I mean, it's going to happen. This world is restructuring with television processes and, you know, places like the WWE are trying to sell and everyone in the content world is a crazy world. If you don't already know that between free content and cheap content, Everybody's trying to move around and shift pieces. Look at soccer, just signed to deal with Apple. Um, and so major league soccer, soccer is with Apple. Not that you care about soccer, but I'm just telling you. And you, you got to pay like 20 bucks a month for the whole thing. And there's no blackouts. Uh, Jake McGee retired. Oh, uh, yeah. Longtime MLB reliever is retiring. He tells Mark Tompkins of Tampa Bay Times, the 30, 36 year old. Said he'll return to Tropicana Field at some point next season to celebrate his retirement for his time with the Rays organization. So he spent like a short minute with us uh, towards the end of his career. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm just looking to see. Uh, Padres promote Ryan Christensen to associate manager. I don't know what that means. Diamondback signed the Iron Man. Manuso. Manuso. For my early contract. I don't think there's really been a big hype prospects. Oh, they're just talking about prospects again. Yep. I think everybody's kind of covering the prospects because that's kind of where that two weeks. And I've got some really exciting things once uh, spring training kicks off that I'm going to be launching. So we're in that two weeks of a new cycle where there's not a lot going on um, outside of, you know, the Super Bowl. And it kind of all, like, focuses around football at this juncture. I don't know why that is. Um, 
remember last year and how hot it was and how everything was going down and it was constant constant news of the lockout and stuff like that. Well, that that's just not happening this year. It's been kind of a slower off season. One thing I did, I, I did um, want to listen to a podcast today that talked about uh, Fernando Tatis and Fernando Tatis Jr. coming back. And that's kind of one of the exciting things, uh, I think, for this baseball season because the, the prospect of one of the best players in the game and one of the young, hot prospects, and yes, I know he did steroids. Okay, well, get over it. He got tested. He got caught. He's, he served his time. It's done just like Ryan Braun. One of our guys did it too. So, but anyways, having the best in the game compete is pretty awesome. Getting to watch the best in the game, I I'm super excited to see if Fernando Tatis play in Milwaukee, uh, and I would definitely go to a Padres game just because they're such low. They have such a load of talent, and they'll be fun to watch. Um, there was one other note from this um, article today that I wanted to mention. And I don't know that I see it. Maybe it was only in email version. Okay, hold on. Let me click the email version. So, um, they were talking about, um, well, this is kind of a trivia, but they're talking about which brewer. Hispanic Brewers player, Mexican-born Brewers player, uh, played in the WBC or was in the first WBCs. Uh, and they gave the options of Jorge De La Rosa, Giovanni Gallardo, Marco Estrada, and Teddy Higuera. The process of elimination, Teddy Higuera is too old. He played in the inaugural, he's bad, played in the inaugural one. So it wouldn't be him. Uh, so I'm going to talk about this next subject, and then we'll we'll give you the answer. So I'll give you some time to think on that. You can type it in the comments if you already know. Timestamp it, though. I don't want you cheating. Uh, but so uh, can you believe that this year will mark a decade since Carlos Gomez's game-ending robbery against Joey Votto and the Reds? The reactions of the players involved are part of what made the July 2008, 2013 so special at Miller Park, stating, uh, starting with closer Francisco Rodriguez watching the ball rocket off Votto's bat with two outs in the top of the ninth inning while there was a runner on base and one run, in a one-run game. Rodriguez didn't even look so sure he had surrendered a go-ahead homer Gomez made a leaping catch at the wall and pulled back, raised his right index finger in the air. When he came back down, he started dancing towards the dugout. Votto pointed in Gomez's direction and demanded proof that the ball was in his glove. I don't remember, know if you remember this. They got the clip in the in the email, so if you get the Adam McKelvey article's email, you can watch it. Again, I don't air clips copyrights. I don't want to deal with copyrights. I got one one mark against it um and if you remember this the reaction was very classic it was like he points and he points and then gogo pops it out and you can just see vado's reaction and vado is one of those great players that we've played against year in and year out i mean his career stands the test of time in ml central He's probably in Butcher's NL Central Hall of Fame. So next time you see Butcher, we'll have to ask if he's in, if Votto's an NL Central Hall of Famer. Uh, but yeah, the Brewers won that game. Um, and the quote from Gogo is great. I never hit a walk-off home run, but I've caught a home run ball to win the game. It's so spe- it's something so special. You can't wait to get home and see it over and over. That was awesome. Gogo was priceless. As as good and bad as he was, he was priceless in many ways. Uh, so the answer to the trivia question, who is the uh, inaugural uh, player from the Brewers to play? It was uh, it, from Mexico, Jorge De La Rosa. Uh, in the 2006 
one of three brewers, uh, one of three brewers, big leaguers in that tournament. The others were third baseman Corey Katsky, Katsky, uh, for Canada, outfielder Carlos Lee El Caballo for Panama. So, a little trip down memory lane with that one, uh, Jorge De La Rosa, who then I believe later went to the Rockies. So, pretty awesome stuff. Uh, so if you guys don't follow the Northwoods League, uh, the Northwoods League has just popped a bunch of their like uh, initial like alternate jerseys and stuff. I'm sure you've seen with the Timber Rattlers, they do the Ugger Ugg. Utter Tuggers. It's a tough one to say. Utter Tuggers. Try saying it. Um, say it out loud right now. So they're doing the the shant the shanty men is the promo for uh the Lake Winnebago region, which is where the Dock Spiders play, uh, which is the local final act team that I go check out with my kid, uh, because it's rather inexpensive baseball. Uh if you haven't yet, get a chance. Uh, you know, I know a, a baseball game and a Brewers game can be a rather expensive adventure for a family, but if you check out the Northwoods League Baseball, it is pretty stellar. And these kids are all prospect goals. So, like, um, I think when I, when I worked there, two of my favorite guys and guys that I had chatted a lot of baseball with just along the sidelines when I was operating the camera uh, by their dugout, uh, Chandler Simpson got drafted um i guess you can't i'm spacing on their names right now but i have i have their signatures on baseballs and stuff like that nice young kids and they get drafted into the majors so you are seeing future major leaguers and i know i say they don't like prospects but at these levels these guys are just competing having fun games scouts are there you know hoping to get a shot and then later down the road we see a lot of them get i think a doc spider a final act Doc Spider actually just had a major league debut late last season. I want to say Tampa, maybe. I don't remember the specifics at this juncture. But yeah, it's just it's fun to watch. It's it's fun to be a part of and to be a watch because watch you're a lot closer, it's a lot smaller, more intimate of a setting. Uh usually there's a lot of fun stuff going on, different things like that. So check those games out we got a lot of a lot of good baseball happening here in wisconsin this summer and that includes our milwaukee brewers who are going to the postseason gonna win the world series call me now on that note though i am i i am going to do a full-out prediction episode uh it'll come probably toward the end of march i'm thinking I don't know. We're gonna do a couple, a couple different things. We're we're working with the people we have and the people we know. Uh, we got some special guests coming in, in right after the Super Bowl. It's kind of hard to line up things with everybody just because of of timing in the Super Bowl and how kind of busy a lot of these people are right now. So, is what it is. But with that being said, that's all I've got to you. Just a short one, a little brief, thirty minutes, less than thirty. Uh, sometimes I like to pop these off because they're just there's just not anything going on when when we have actual baseball and games to break down, you know, spring training news and all that good stuff. Oh, there's gonna be so much breakdown. Oh, we'll update. Prince Fielder did survive. His hand is a little brokey, but he did survive. Doc Spider did survive. And then the rest of them survived. So, and I think Kane survived as well. That's in my wife's fixing bobbleheads area where she fixes Aiden's toys. Don't knock it. Whatever. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, go Bruce. Have a great day. Thank you for watching the Miller Park Minute. Go Brewers.